I, I think we have to proceed rather carefully uh, on this. Uh, trade agreements that by themselves are complicated and they're difficult and they take a very long time um, to negotiate. And there is another party there that's of a different culture, perhaps a different language, a different continent there and such. And you know, we're going to tell our president and we're going to tell our um, federal legislature that they've got to craft an agreement that 50 states have to agree on. I think that's rather cumbersome. Um, my position is, and, and always will be, is trade is good. Uh, more trade is better, and free trade is the best. Uh, unfortunately, politics and emotions and everything get in the way of the free trade, and, and we have to accept that. Um, however, putting more constraints on these folks, um, I, I think, are in the are going to do nothing but give us watered down agreements or no agreements at all. So I do not see how this promotes trade, which is what this TPPA is supposed mm -hmm. to be about. Promotes sh shifts in market share, but it it doesn't do anything for trade or even increasing the, the use of, of pharmaceuticals themselves. It just, it, it, to me, it, it's, it seems like it's just legislation for the interest of one industry. Yes. <laughs> am I reading, am I understanding that correctly? I think so. Okay. So. I've, I have quoted the industry's position in the paper version. They say, uh, the objective is to increase the availability of high quality and innovative drugs. So they want you to understand that in their mind there's a connection between their ability to get premium prices or to maintain their price levels they've established in the market through their marketing and their ability to invest in the drugs of the future. That's their argument. So it's nothing to do with trade. It should be under the guise of the trade agreement, in my humble opinion. Well, if you, were to, right, so. if you were to 